my name is Hannah Wilson. Uh, I'm a Visit Owensboro, and today I'm sitting with uh, Joshua Johnson, the geocaching blogger. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Awesome. So I'm going to start off um, asking where you're from. Start there. Yep. I am from Chile, but not always Chile, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Okay. <laughs> Minneapolis, Minneapolis, St. Paul area, Twin Cities. So Chile, explain that a little bit. <laughs> well, just because we're we're up here in the Northland, so it gets it gets pretty frigid up there, and uh, yeah, it's yeah. it's cold. It's cold, but not today. Not too bad today because we're having a nice spring day. So Minnesota doesn't sound like somewhere that would be a geocaching hotspot. Um, so how and kind of when did you get your start in that geocaching world? Well, geocaching is. It is a worldwide hobby. There are over 3 million geocaches hidden worldwide. So it is, uh, they're everywhere. <laughs> they're in cold places. They're in warm places, snowy places. Uh, yeah, they're everywhere. But I got started with geocaching. Um, it was 13 years ago when I was trying to look for fun things to do with my little kids at the time. And I had a coworker that that did it, so I thought, oh, I'm I'm gonna get myself a little handheld GPS device and and try it. And I, I found one right across the street from where I worked, and you know, 13 years later, I'm still doing it. That's amazing. Are your kids into it? Yeah, my kids. Well, my kids are a little older now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so they were, you know, they really got into it a, a lot when they were younger just because you know you, you kind of sell it as like we're we're gonna go on a little treasure hunt so um but my my college age daughter still still loves loves to do it because it it she's realized it brings you to some really really cool locations awesome yeah. well you are not called the geocaching blogger for nothing you have an amazing presence on youtube um <laughs> And I read somewhere that you haven't missed uploading something geocache related on YouTube um, since 2011. So like, where does that love for the game come from? Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's yeah, it's quite, <laughs> I'm a little bit stubborn. I, I, <laughs> I set a goal at one point to, to you know, create a, at least one new geocaching venture every week. And it, yeah, it's been going strong for, for 10 years. So I, I guess part of it is my passion for geocaching, but also my, my passion for uh, putting out geocaching content on YouTube. But I think the passion comes from all the wonderful benefits that, that geocaching has. Geocaching takes you to, like I said before, really amazing locations. People hide geocaches in places that they want to show off in their communities. So I learned about like a waterfall I didn't know was there, a park that I didn't know was there, a cool a cool business that I that I didn't realize was there before. So I, I love it because of the places it brings me that I wouldn't know about otherwise. It's kind of like a tour guide. Like you go to a new city and it takes you to all the coolest new par parks and, and different places. So that's one of the things that uh, gives me a lot of passion for geocaching. The second thing I'd say that gives me a uh, passion for it is it's just fun. Who, who wouldn't, who, who wouldn't love just a, a fun little treasure, treasure hunt. Uh, the, the feeling you get when you sort of discover like, Oh my gosh, this thing has been hidden here. And I've walked about by this park every, every day. And I never knew that there was this whole other world where people hide hidden, hidden containers. So, so I, I think just the exploration part of it is really, really cool. Yeah, that's awesome. So you're telling me there's a world I'm unaware of that I should should dive into, I guess. Yeah, you are a muggle because <laughs> that's what that's what they call people who are not aware of that there's this geocaching world out there. But actually, because you are talking to me right right now, you are entering the world of geocaching and out of the world of muggles. So okay. congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, so your videos are so much more than blogs sometimes. I mean, you, you are not just a star geocacher and blogger. You are an actor, you know, yeah. um, you like come to life as your characters and you're really dedicated. Uh, so I was wondering what inspires that kind of content? Where does that come from? Well, yeah, you're right. I, you know, with, with YouTube, I always try to make it 
as entertaining as possible. And I was in college, I was a, a theater major. So that's maybe a little bit where the acting acting comes from. Sometimes, sometimes I've had some geocaching videos where I've gone geocaching as, as a, a different characters. Most of the time I'm just myself. But one of the things I think that uh, is really cool about geocaching is that the creativity of the actual geocaches. People create geocaches that are are different themes. So, for example, um, my my friend had a, a Doctor Who TARDIS geocache, <laughs> and, and that video was all about time machines. Uh, I visited Mount Airy, North Carolina, which is which is uh, kind of the home place of the you know Mayberry, the Andy Griffith show. So I I ran around town and I I did that whole geocaching adventure as as Barney Fife and. The funny thing about that is when I did that, the the people uh, that were watching me film that they thought I was like employed by the town to like <laughs> impersonate <laughs> impersonate Barty Five. So yeah, so I try to keep it I try to keep it uh, interesting, but the geocaches in itself and the locations kind of I guess spark the creativity to make it you know to make the videos interesting. Right. So you talk about there being different types of geocaches. Uh, what makes a really good geocache find? Um, I would say uh, three things, a really cool location. So if it brings me somewhere awesome, that's really fun. Another great geo, uh, uh, another great thing that makes geocaches great is who you're with. A lot of times when, when I go out geocaching, I'm going with a friend or, or family member. And so it's just a great, um, great, great way to spend time with the your loved ones but i also have met a lot of people through geocaching and then i i guess the third thing that make a ge makes a geocache great is when it's creative when the person that's hidden the geocache has made it made it interesting for example like there's a theme to it or it's it's like a puzzle box because some of them some of them are easy to find but they're like tricky to get into and so you have to figure out different sorts of puzzles to try to like open it up I love that. That's like my favorite thing to hear from the geocache community is that everybody just loves like the journey of getting to it. They don't yes. even care about what's in it. It's just <laughs> the love of the game. I love that. Yeah. A lot of people think when they hear geocaching, all they hear is the word cache. <laughs> and they're like, so <laughs> you look for these things so you can get money. And you're like, well, the reward is really in the journey because usually there's just sometimes just McDonald's toys inside of them. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I've also heard that there are like levels of difficulty to the geocaches. Mm -hmm. um, are there different kinds? Maybe you already answered that question, but yeah, uh, there are lots of different official kinds. So on the geocaching.com website, or if you download the app, you will see that on the map, there will be actually different kinds. So there's like a traditional geocache where it's just like you get to the place and there's a container there and you find the container. But there's also um, uh, geocaches called mystery caches, which you have to solve some sort of puzzle, either like online or on the website or like when you get there, That kind of like I was describing before. There's virtual ones where the, the location uh, doesn't suit itself to hide a container there but it's a really significant a place. So when you get there, you'd have to like answer a question about the geocache. Um, there's multi-caches. So you go to the first location and then it gives you information to go get the coordinates for the next location. So you go to multiple locations and then when you get to the end, you get the, you get the geocache. So yes, there, there's lots of different types and honestly, I could go on and on about the technicalities of it, but then this interview would seem really nerdy and I'm doing my best not to sound like a nerd, but I'm probably failing. Oh, nerd out. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is the coolest video you've gotten to create? I've done some really cool videos in really cool locations. I've, I've been to Germany twice. And by the way, Germans, they talk about geeking on in geocaches. Like the, some of the coolest geocaches in the world are in Germany. Uh, geocaching is very popular in Germany. I've got to go to Brazil and there's a very famous, famous geocache in Brazil, like in the jungle. And I've got to, I got to go there as well. So I've got, I've got to go to some like cool exotic places, but I guess the one that's sticking out to me right now is there's a series of geocaches, sort of like a multi-cache in Woodstock, Illinois. And the reason that place is famous is because that is where the movie Groundhog Day was filmed. So 
I decided for for Groundhog Day to actually stay in the bed and breakfast where Bill Murray woke up in the movie, and I experienced a geocache um, like it was Groundhog Day. So if you watch that video on my YouTube channel, you'll see that I I found the same geocache over and over and over. <laughs> and over again and i was essentially stuck in that town finding the same geocache over and over again so that yeah that was a really fun video to make and uh the people in woodstock probably thought i was a little bit crazy for filming the same scene over and over and over in different ways <laughs> <laughs> um so about the geocaching community um you know i talked about how i i love that it's all about the journey i mean it and it feels like you all have a really close-knit uh, community, even though it's kind of something you can do by yourself with your friends with, you know, people you meet just because you all love geocaching, uh, which is really cool to me. Um, what's something unique or maybe just your favorite thing like about that community of people? You're right. Um, the geocaching community is pretty, uh, I guess, pretty tight knit. And I think it, it is a very niche hobby. So while geocaching is worldwide with three million geocaches hidden worldwide when you go to major geocaching events um you 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 start seeing some some of the same people and so every time you go to it it's just kind of like a a little family reunion a little geocaching family reunion and i just i just love that about it and and i just love the um the diversity of ages um you know there's geocachers that can be kids and families all the way to folks that are that are elderly so it 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 is a hobby for is a hobby for everyone and when you go to a geocaching event that's very clear yeah and i think that's why it's picking up um in popularity uh and lots of people are just now discovering it um so what would be your advice to a newbie like me <laughs> yeah um well, the, everybody asks, like, how do I get started geocaching, first of all? So if we want to go very, very, very basic, um, the cool thing is when I started geocaching, you had to have like a dedicated device, like a handheld GPS, because the crazy thing is, you're right, geocaching is picking up, but it's 21 years old. It's been happening since the year 2000. And actually, uh, COVID, COVID has, has caused it to probably grow because people are like, I need a socially distance activity outside and, and uh, what, a, what a great great thing to get involved with. But download the geocaching app to get started. It will, uh, it will help you through your first finds, like the official geocaching app, and it's free to get, to get started. And then, and then when you go off to find your first geocache, um, I would encourage people to look for for ones that are larger in size because they can be they can be tiny tiny and uh look for something a, a little bigger because everyone it'll tell you what the size is and then it'll also tell you the difficulty how hard it is to find it and it'll also tell you the terrain how difficult it is to get to so it's it's a star one star is the easiest five stars the most difficult so start with with um with an easier one and then the final thing there's a lot i could say about this question is if you're struggling because a lot of people struggle because they don't even when they go and find their first geocache they don't even know what they're necessarily looking for because you have to this is going to sound really nerdy you have to develop some geo senses mm -hmm. I got <laughs> so, <you. laughs> so when you get to the area you always think to yourself okay if i was to hide something here like where would i hide it and that's sometimes that's usually kind of helps you like figure it out but people should not be shy to try to reach out to the person that hide, hid the cache so so on the app, it'll tell you, it'll show you the name of the, the geocache name of the person that hit it. You can actually contact them if people are struggling and say, hey, uh, this is my first few geocaches. I'm really struggling. Can you give me some sort of hint? And the geocaching community is always very gracious that people want, people want others to find their geocache. So, and they're still friendly. They, they'll be willing to help. So those are a few things. Yeah, awesome. I will take your advice. <laughs> um, <laughs> So geocaching is on the rise, but that's why we're really excited as Visit Owensboro to host MOGA. It's one of the oldest and largest geocaching events in the world. Uh, and that'll be on May and May 28th to the 31st. Um, so what do you think of big geocaching events like MOGA versus that kind of traditional route? Oh, I, I love large geocaching events and I've really missed them. 
um, because because we I haven't been to a, a large geocaching event in over a year. And again, like I said before, I I do love it because it's like a it's like a geocaching again family reunion. A lot of a lot of my friends. Uh, that's the only way I see them. I like if people come for larger geocaching events. They come from all over the world. I have I have friends from uh, Germany, Australia, France, and because people will, you know geocaches are so diehard, they will they will come from all over. And for me, and for me, it's really an opportunity for me to meet face to face the people that watch my videos to see faces behind the comments. Um, but I love, there's a lot of diversity in large geocaching events. So uh, an event like MOGA, there is a competition aspect of it. So there, which I've been to MOGA several times where you actually like you get a set of coordinates and you, and you, it's an actual sort of race and it's, it can, it's it, for some, it can be very competitive and other people can just be kind of a fun little thing. Um, so I love that aspect of it. Uh, also when there's a big geocaching event, people like to hide really fun geocaches to be found. So there's a lot of um, energy put into put into um, finding lots of cool things. And another thing is that they're all often hosted by really cool cities, often cities that I've never visited before. So it's for me for travel, it's an excuse to get me to explore a new city. Yeah, that's my favorite part. That's why yeah. I want to get into it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and MOGA this year is going to be in, you know, a downtown city kind of setting in Owensboro, um, which does offer a lot of awesome spots to discover, but is that different uh, from a typical geocaching event or are they really wherever, whenever? Yeah, it's it's a real variety. You know, I've been to geocaches, uh, geocaching events in, in big cities like Cincinnati, and I've been to big geocaching events like in the middle, in the middle of a giant state park. So there is a lot of variety. I, I mean, I've, I've been to several large geocaching events. So being in a, a city area um, is unique in, in some ways, but it's really unique because of the things that are in that city. So as I think about Owensboro, uh, the Bluegrass Hall of Fame uh, sounds amazing. The, the Riverwalk area, um, Owensboro also has a, like a geo tour, which is a, a, a set of uh, designated uh, geocaches where if you complete them, you get like a little commemorative coin. So yeah, there's a lot of variety in big geocaching events um, and everyone's different. You know, sometimes there's entertainment. So I, I love that. Great places to eat, places to drink, those kinds of things, so. Yeah. All right, Joshua, thank you. Um, I do want to push out, you know, MOGA 2021, Owensboro, May 28th through the 31st. Um, and I do wanna make sure anybody interested in coming to MOGA knows about the opportunity to save a little money on your stay, uh, get an extra special cash by booking through the mogageo.com website. Um, they're offering special rates to the attendees that will also earn a commemorative coin for MOGA 2021 uh, and a chance to win a $100 Marriott gift card. So visit that Very website cool. if you're interested, yeah. Awesome, and I will be there, I will be there. Exactly, and you will be you. there. So if you're watching this, I would love to, I'd love to meet you. And uh, I've been to Owensboro once before, and as somebody has been there, it, the city has a lot to offer. Uh, great geocaching. And if you're watching this and you're like, I've never geocached before, like it's not just for diehards. It's a very welcoming crowd. And uh, we'll, we'd be love to, we'd love to welcome you to our awesome hobby. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thanks, Hannah. Appreciate it.